Hi, I'm Sherry Granberry, a volunteer reader for Raising a Reader. It's a national nonprofit that helps families develop, practice, and maintain at-home literacy routines. Today I'm going to read a book with you with permission from Pinata Books. I'll be reading Harvesting Friends. It was written by Katherine Contreras and illustrated by Gary Undercover. This book is bilingual. It means it's written in both Spanish and English. I don't read or speak Spanish, but I do know a few words like this one, amigos, in the title means friends. Let's see if we can find some other familiar Spanish words as we read. Harvesting friends. What do you think it's going to be about with all these things in the picture? I see lots of vegetables. Anything you like to eat? Lupe loved her family's salsa garden with its tomatoes, chili peppers, onions, garlic, and cilantro. Her mother cooked, roasted, chopped, and grinded everything together to make chunky salsa to eat with salsy, salty chips and tacos. In the spring, Lupe and her family dug into the rich soil to plant the seeds and tiny plants. They wrote each plant's name on thin popsicle sticks. All summer, Lupe and her family watered, fed, and weeded the garden. But one summer day, all the big red tomatoes were gone. Lupe looked in between the branches, but no luck. The biggest, juiciest tomatoes had disappeared. What do you think happened to them? Mama, the big tomatoes are gone. They were almost ready to be picked, Lupe said as she ran into the house. Are you sure? said Mama as they hurried outside to investigate. I wonder what happened, said Lupe, looking under the tangle of bushes. Lupe saw a small necklace with a gold medal on the ground. She picked it up and gave it to Mama. Who could have dropped it, Mama, she asked. I'm not sure, but I think someone left it here on purpose, Mama said, caressing the pretty medal. Two weeks later, when Lupe walked into the garden, she saw a boy crouching on his knees over the tomato plants. With a couple of big tomatoes beside him, he was reaching deep to pick the biggest one. What are you doing? shouted Lupe, surprising him. He started to run, but he tripped on the rake. He fell on the tomatoes and red juice splashed all over him. Wait, wait, I'm not going to hurt you. Lupe recognized Antonio, the new boy in school. Why are you taking our tomatoes? she asked. We don't have much money. The tomatoes look so good. And I left my gold necklace here in exchange for the tomatoes, he said. My grandmother gave it to me when I left Mexico. It's very valuable. I figured it would be a fair trade. Suddenly, Lupe had an idea. If you help me with the garden, I'll give back your necklace and some tomatoes. Deal? Deal, said Antonio, already picking up the rake, ready to work. Antonio started weeding, and Lupe went inside to tell her mother what had happened. Later, Mama invited Antonio to eat lunch, and she gave him some tomatoes and a jar of salsa to take home. She placed the jar in a bag and said, Bread that is shared tastes better. Mama, you forgot something, said Lupe, giving the necklace back to Antonio. No, you keep it until the work is done, he said. Lupe and Antonio became friends over the summer. They weeded watered and picked tomatoes, onions, chilies, and cilantro. They even planted corn and lettuce. Their mothers also became friends and shared the garden's harvest. Almost two months later, the growing season ended. Lupe and Antonio com composted the plant's leaves and stems, recycling all the plant nutrients back into the soil. Lupe returned the gold necklace to An Antonio and he accepted it. Lupe had a great idea for next year's garden. Let's ask our neighbors to help, said Lupe to her mother. With everyone helping, it will be easier. When spring arrived, they invited their neighbors to pitch in. Dozens of families brought money and tools and started working. Lupe and Antonio bought seeds and small vegetables plants with the donations. With everyone's help, they finished planting in one day. The sign here says Amigos Garden. That means friends garden. Two months later, the tomatoes grew in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Some tomatoes were round, some were oval, others were pear-shaped. There were yellow, orange, red, and even purple ones. Have you ever seen a purple tomato? Like a family, the community worked together taking care of young plants. 
A pair of brothers planted two kinds of peppers, fire red and green. A grandmother and her grandchildren grew brunches of fragrant herbs for cooking and healing. A father grew watermelon, which his son made into cool watermelon juice. Three sisters grew squash, beans, and corn, America's first crops. The garden, like a colorful Mexican blanket, embraced everyone who worked on it. Down here, the word is serape. It means blanket. The garden grew, and soon it became more than a place where hunger was fed. It became a gathering place, like a kitchen, where everyone comes together to eat and share. They shared stories and offered gardening secrets. They even celebrated birthdays and special holidays. The new Amigos garden grew more than just plants. It grew friendships. Looks like they're having a big party here with music and dancing. That's the end of the book, but at the end of the book, there's some recipes from Lupe Salsa Garden. There's some pico de gallo, a tomato, cucumber, and red onion salad, and a bean salad recipe. Maybe your families would like to share that together. That's Harvesting Friends by Kathleen Contreras and Gary Undercover.